So what is going on everybody? Huge PSA before we get started with this video. If you guys are using Universal Control with iPadOS 15.4 and the latest version of macOS which is 12.3 and you want to update your iPad to iPadOS Beta 15.5 Beta 1, Universal Control will break. So Universal Control will only work if you continue to update the betas on both your macOS and your iPadOS device. So for my instance, I only updated it on my iPad and it broke Universal Control because I did not put the new macOS beta on my MacBook Air. So big PSA if you guys love Universal Control but are in the beta program on the iPad alone, do not update unless you want to lose Universal Control. And I'll be honest, we're going to go through some of the features, but if it means losing Universal Control, it's not really worth the update quite yet. But let's figure out exactly what's going on with iPadOS 15.5 beta 1 because after about three weeks or what seemed like about a month of a beta drought, we finally got something from Apple. But let's figure out exactly what's new because there are some new tangible things that we should talk about. But let's get into it. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna pull the iPad up right here so we can actually screen share and show you guys exactly what's going on with this update. The first thing I do wanna show you is I did take a screenshot, but a little bit too late in terms of how big the build number is, but I did see online that it's about 5.2 gigs. So give yourselves about 10 gigabytes of space in order to get this installed correctly. So there aren't any issues when restarting and things like that because I have run into an issue where I'm low on space. I tried to update it and then it tried to update itself, but then it didn't work and I had to reiterate. I had to go back and delete a bunch of stuff in order for this to get done. And then let's talk build number, right? So if we go into the about section in your settings, you see that we're on software version 15.5 and then we're on 19F5047E. So that means we're gonna go from E to then D, C, B, A. You know, Apple might skip a few. We're definitely gonna get an RC edition. But again, with a 15.5 iteration of an update, especially on the beta program, the first beta program, we're not gonna see too many things because normally the 0.4 update is the biggest one. So 15.4 brought universal control to the entire public, to the masses, and that was the big headlining feature. And now with 15.5, it's more so Apple kind of tidying everything up, getting everybody ready for WWDC, and then giving all the real features with iPadOS 16, which hopefully it's something that's worth waiting for. So the first one we're going to talk about is the new Apple Cast situation. So if you go into Messages, and if you go down to your little section where it has all the applications down here, so you can see the photos, the App Store, you can now see that the Apple Cash button changed from an Apple Pay to an Apple Cash. So with 15.4 and lower, that little icon was an Apple Pay situation, but now it's Apple Cash, so if you click on it, it goes straight to your Apple Cash card that you can pay from and things like that. And now you have two options, which is request and pay, and that's also directly inside of the wallet app on iOS. Because right now with iPadOS, there's some wallet access, but it's not nearly the same as wallet access on your iPhone. So on your iPhone, you do have the send and receive buttons directly from your wallet app. So Apple's definitely making a play at Venmo, at Cash App, they're trying to replace everything. And I think Apple's last hook in terms of services is to get into your finance. They want you to make purchases with the Apple Card. They want you to use Apple Pay for everything. They want you to use Apple Cash with cash back. And now they're introducing a new thing which is gonna replace an iTunes card with the Apple Account Card, which is kind of like a gift card repository for you to have all your gift card money, but digitized on your iPhone or on your iPad. But then the rest of these updates were all backend updates in the code and more foreshadowing than anything else. So you can see here, we're on Mac Rumors, so shout out to them for putting this together. There's a reference to Apple Classicals. So Apple purchased a streaming service that prioritized classical music, and that's pretty much all they did. They purchased them a few months ago, so I think Apple is now rebranding that, turning into Apple Classical. I don't know if they're gonna include it with their Apple Music service, if it's free with that, or if it's its own little streaming service and things like that, but there is lines in the code that suggest that there's gonna be like an Apple Classical application and a standalone application moving forward. The next little update that was also inside the code has to do with the new sports kit update. So what sports kit is and what it's going to be is I think Apple is using that to make it a more immersive experience while watching sports through Apple TV. So we've heard that Apple TV Plus is gonna be doing MLB, so baseball Friday nights. They're gonna be broadcasting two games, very similar to what Amazon Prime did with Thursday Night Football. And what they're doing is with the Apple TV, the sport kit update is gonna allow us to see scores in real time, be more, a little bit more interactive, probably tweet directly from there, things along those lines. So it's not just a viewing experience, but there is some interconnectivity between yourself and the game. So those are the sports kit updates that again, we're all in the back end and none of it is visual currently, but it will be coming probably in this next beta two update, if anything. And then like I mentioned earlier, Apple's rebranding their iTunes Pass, which is again, it was like a repository to hold all your digital gift card money from Apple and they're rebranding it to like an Apple account card. Like I don't really know why Apple wants to do that because they already have their Apple Cash card so they could probably put gift card money in the Apple Cash card, but it's a little bit different because it acts as Venmo. So now if you're fully immersed in the Apple like finance situation, you're gonna have an Apple account card, which is all gift card money. You can have an Apple Cash card, which is like a debit, prepaid kind of gift card situation, but not really. And then you have the actual credit card, the Apple card, that if you do want to get involved with that as well. So it's three different cards, all from Apple, you got your credit, 
sort of like a debit, and then your gift card one. But that's pretty much all that we found in terms of updates for iPadOS 15.5 Beta 1. Now let's talk about battery life and overall performance. So if we go into battery, let's check what we got going on. We got the last 10 days. We're doing about two hours of screen on time, about an hour and a half of screen off time. If we go into day like Monday, you can see we had three and a half hours of screen on time, three and a half hours of screen off time, and we took up just about over 100% battery. So, so lately I've been using my iPad as a dedicated kind of secondary screen or a secondary monitor, but also with universal control on a nice little stand that I have by a company called Magflute, Magflute, which is awesome. If you guys do want to check out that video, I'll link it down below. But for the most part, I do keep it plugged in all day now, which I got to go back to testing out the battery life and things like that. But overall, LumaFusion, an hour of usage, took up about 40% of battery. The home and lock screen, because it does stay unlocked when universal control is turned on, took about an hour, which about 30 minutes of screen on time. Gmail, 24 minutes, was about 13%. So you can see that the battery life is okay. I'm just, I want to get to the point where we are at that eight hours of battery life, that 10 hours of battery life on a single charge without having to stay plugged in throughout the day. But then overall performance has been very, very snappy, right? Everything works how it's supposed to. Multitasking works great. The notifications are working. Do not disturb. Control center. Everything is working smoothly. I haven't had any app crashes. Twitter doesn't auto log me out, which is something that we dealt with in the last beta program. So overall, I'm happy with the stability of a 15.5 beta one update, and I'm sure it's just gonna get better and better. And then also it does fix the battery issue that people were having with 15.4. So if you're on 15.4 and you go to the new beta program with 15.5 beta one, your issues with battery life should be fixed. But that's pretty much everything we have with iPadOS 15.5. Let's finish up the video. Also, I think we're like one or two subscribers away from 40K. So let's hit that button, that subscribe button. So as you guys saw, there weren't too many differences. There was like one main tangible difference, but again, it was mostly on the iOS side, which is the new Apple Cash card, but we still got the same rebranding inside of, let's say like the iMessages app where the Apple Cash went from Apple Pay to now Apple Cash. But outside of that, it was mostly stuff in the code. So it's kind of like foreshadowing for what Apple's gonna be doing later on. So we have the Apple Classical application, which should be coming. We have the Apple Sport Kit, which is to help supplement that new MLB Friday night thing, which I'm hoping Apple gets some more sports in there because I'm not the biggest baseball guy. Rather have some basketball and football in there. But I did hear that Apple might be making a play at DirecTV Sunday ticket, which for all my sports people that follow here, which probably aren't many. That's huge news because I'm a big Dolphins fan not living in Florida. And that's why I always tell you guys to leave a little dolphin because I am a Dolphins fan. And there was also some new stuff about this new iTunes pass being changed to an Apple account card, which is basically like a gift card, but digitized on your iPhone itself. So for right now, it's more foreshadowing than anything else really, aside from the Apple Cash application being changed up a little bit. But outside of that, we're gonna be getting some of these updates as we move forward through these beta programs. And again, we're on 15.5. Like Apple doesn't really go to 15.6 or 0.7 or 0.8. After 15.5, they kind of like tidy everything up for everybody and then they get us ready for WWDC. But again, I do want to reiterate that if you do update your iPad to iPadOS 15.5, you will lose and break universal control until macOS catches up to it, whether on the beta or at the public release scale when 15.5 publicly releases. But that's gonna do for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin right here. And if you guys wanna watch some more videos on iPad content or anything else, maybe MagSafe related, iPhone related, click on one of these videos right here. You're definitely gonna enjoy them. But thanks so much for watching and I'm out of here.